Um, so I've been doing this now for all of these years, and I, over the years I've been getting better at it. And what I discovered, Marshall, I was doing... This is Marshall Penkovsky, yeah. Upper Tell You. Yeah. It was my, the first class I had, the first class that I taught when I first went to George Brown, there were, we, we, we changed from a two to a three year course. And in the third year of the first class that began when I first went there, I suddenly discovered to my horror that I had a Hamlet in my class. I had a young Hamlet in my class. What to do? I had to stage Hamlet for him. I had to do Hamlet as a third year showcase. And so I went ahead and did it. But for the play within the play, I knew that I wanted the style of that play to be elevated, pitched well above the rest of the play. And I called Marshall and asked him if he would come in and stage that part, which he did brilliantly. And I was so excited. And I then asked Marshall if he would give me some time. And I actually did some study with Marshall. And On your feet? Yes, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. He, uh, he came in and spent some hours with me. The clamp gesture, rhetorical the gesture? The rhetorical gesture. Uh, all Just of this. Define for us a rhetorical gesture. Uh, well, it's simply um, a heightened form of what we normally have. Uh, you know, we, we, we speak with our limbs. We speak with our... We have all kinds of gestures we make. Every, every nation has its characteristic gestures. Rhetorical gesture is simply a... Um, a sculpted, if you like, form of that. A sculpted form of yes, a contemporary of, 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 gesture. Of ordinary gesture, yeah. Because people are looking at these old, at these paintings, these portraits, these, these statues, and they're modeling themselves on that. That's, that's how that character would move. And so there's the whole, uh, and you must have done this with, with him, there's the whole. Uh, vocabulary of rhetorical gesture. And as he was expounding this to me and showing me and taking me through it, I realized, my God, I've been doing this all my life. This is very, very strange. It's just so familiar. Yeah, even in the interview, as you're doing this. Oh, right? yeah. And I go, yeah, okay. Yeah. Shoulders, chest, well, it's, it's, arm. I, I can't believe this. And uh, so more and more, I've been, I've been passing this on to my students. And they have said, and they've been saying this now for oh, decades, that the period study was for them perhaps a climax of their entire experience at theater school. It was one of the most exciting, most advancing things that they had done at the theater school. They, they say this from, from years and years back. And it's, it's interesting to see kids that you maybe didn't think had a whole lot, but when you take hold of them and shake them up and allow them, and many of them didn't know that they were allowed. Can I be that expansive? Can I really be that big? Yes, if you are connected, if you're doing all the things we started doing in the zone of silence, if you are listening and responding and connecting, of course you can. And that's the game. How big can you go and still stay there, still be there? Well, I don't think we're going to get a great classical theater company being formed immediately out of all of this, but if those actors can have that kind of a growing experience somewhere along the line in their actor training, 
surely they're going to be the better actors for it. I had one of my best experiences at the National Theatre School, you weren't there, I'm sorry to say, was with a designer yeah. called Alan Barlow. Yeah. And he directed a restoration play. Ah. And what Alan did as a designer is he, for the first time in my life, he put together all aspects of a period. The music, the architecture, the costume, yeah. the drama, yes. the style, the posture, Absolutely. the gestures. everything, yeah. And it was a kind of epiphany for me because rather than being some alien style that you did this for whatever yeah. reason I didn't understand, suddenly because of the music, the building, the shape of the window, Precisely. the cut of the cloth, yeah. the cut of the line, it all came together and I smelt it for of the first time. And I believed it. Yeah. And it, it was like a window opening yeah. uh, where there was a wall I could never see through. Oh yes, all that other classical stuff. They do that stuff. The window opened. And I, I breathed the air of, of the course, time, of and course. I found it so exciting. But it was like you're describing, yeah. putting together those elements of what it is to step into that person's skin. Because we're actors, we All step into other people's rooted skin. rooted in a reality. In a reality, yeah. It is rooted in a reality. It's just not our present contemporary reality, but it is no less a truthful reality. Yeah. And to have that happening suddenly on a stage is so liberating. When I had been at uh, St. Lawrence Center as a dramaturge through the 70s, coming to the end of the... And you did a dramaturge on uh, The Plough and the Stars, did oh, well, you not? Well, you see, that's, that's what... And it's I a, was in The Plough and the Stars. A, do I remember? That's where we first met. Um, do you remember the fist fight that almost happened on stage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> no, uh, I, I began there, backing into this position I've got myself into now, because Leon asked me to do these talks to the company on the first rehearsal. This is 1974, 72, 3, 4, up to 79. At Toronto Arts Toronto Productions. Arts so produ called? Toronto Arts Productions, St. Lawrence Centre. And I, you've, you've heard some of those things, because we did The Plow on the Stars, we did Romeo and Juliet. Oh, I thought you were this madman in the corner. I was! <laughs> of course I was. <laughs> uh, but I began doing that kind of thing, and you know, I, I'm still having to do it. Brian Bedford wants me to do this. Every time he's doing a show now at Stratford, he has me come in and do that. Joe Ziegler likes me to do this when he's doing a show. I still do it. But um, toward the end of that period, and uh, Leon was leaving to go to, to uh, New York, and uh, you know, I was beginning to look about me. And that's just before I, I came down to National Theatre School with Perry and Joel. And I was beginning to think about well, all this research I was doing on these various plays, these various periods, it really ought to come together in some kind of uh, um, training for people. And I had an idea of having a course where people studied history, the political history, the, the, um, the, 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 all of the aspects of a period, the religion, the philosophy, the, the superstition, the, the, the customs, the food and drink, the clothes, the armaments, the war, oh, everything. And then out of that, took scenes from plays of that period with all of that knowledge and did them on that basis. And I came uh, to Ryerson to talk to Brian Mason about it. Brian at that time was the chair here in, of the department. And he promptly took out from his desk drawer a sheaf of papers and he showed them to me. And this, he'd been thinking along exactly the same lines. And he had a course outline already there which I don't think ever came uh, into use, but we talked about, because we both independently been thinking precisely about this. Um, and then, then I went down to, to uh, National Theatre School, and that's where, through another uh, bit of a quirk, uh, I began doing this. Right. But at, the whole idea is to be studying the period first. A, a period study, is a combined Before study. we get to that, I'm going to take a time out. Are you? Yep, I'm going to take a time out. Um, and then I will, we'll go back to the 18th century and we'll talk about period and the pieces of the period. Yeah. Because I want to talk about lyricism as well, because you were a lyric <laughs> person. 
and that's something that's missing from who we are. I just see it in everything you do. There's a lyricism that you mm -hmm. like, and you. Sorry, I'm just I'm just thinking where I'm going to go when we come back. All right. Okay.